Forgiveness is not allowing someone else's actions or attitude to control or dictate my actions or attitudes. Forgiveness is an act of my will. If I don't make decision, I'll have to live with the crippling consequences of my unforgiveness. Forgiveness is getting my own heart right with God. And forgiveness is a lifelong lifestyle, not a one act of time. Hey friends, you're listening to the Victor Marks Podcast with Victor Marks, founder of All Things Possible Ministries. Welcome to the show where we bring you real conversations facing life's hard truths, stories of redemption, and the latest from the front lines. Whether you're on the road, getting your day started, or finally settling in, we've got an exciting new episode planned for you. So let's dive into today's show. Welcome back to part two of today's live message. Continuing from Matthew chapter 6, Victor shares the real freedom in forgiveness and how unforgiveness stores up bitterness in our hearts, which closes us off from God's grace and His Spirit. We can trust that God Almighty has everything in control and He will take care of evil. Victor shares how forgiveness is not allowing someone else's actions or attitudes to control or dictate our actions or attitudes. It's about getting our hearts right with God. Most of all, as believers, forgiveness is a lifestyle. Here's more from Victor Marks on when you just can't forgive. Lord's Prayer, Mount Prayer, verse 9, talking about how we should pray. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, honored be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. How many of you are familiar with that one? What I want to look at right here for a moment is verse 12. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us of our wrong as we forgive those who have done wrong against us. You guys, I promise you, standing up here, I promise you, this may be one of the most difficult subjects to speak on, and yet it's vital it's critical. It's absolutely necessary for you and I not only to forgive, but to be forgiven. So I think people get caught up. I speak from a background of I had a lot of reason not to forgive people. But let me tell you what forgiveness is, because I think people sometimes get it mixed up. Let me tell you what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a decision of my will, because no one feels like forgiving the person that hurts them. Amen? Forgiveness is not pretending you were not hurt. Forgiveness is not justifying the offender. It's not okay with God that they hurt you. Forgiveness does not mean you must immediately trust the offender again. Forgiveness and trust are two separate issues, folks. We must forgive and then we can work towards trust. Say amen. I tell folks, hey, there are people I've forgiven completely. I have forgiven, but if they showed up on my doorstep, want to come in my home, I'd say it'd probably be a good idea if you backed up to that curb. Because <laughs> I don't trust you one bit. So forgiveness and trust are two different things. But that issue right there is oftentimes what keeps people from forgiving because they think, well, if I forgive them, then I got to... For- no. Forgiveness also doesn't mean Reconciliation. Sometimes that is not possible. You forgive someone, but it doesn't mean relationally you're going to be reconciled to them. And it's okay. And God doesn't look at you and say, oh, no. The main thing is, do you forgive them? Forgiveness is not taking vengeance. God will hold each of us accountable. You are responsible for yourself only. And forgiveness is not easy. It's, it's costly. Because it costs God everything. And it may cost you. Hmm. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is not pretending. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is not bringing up the past. Forgiveness is not demanding someone change before we forgive. True forgiveness is really rare because it's hard. So does that help you understand what forgiveness is not? I'll tell you what forgiveness is. It's freedom. Real freedom. Freedom that allows you to receive blessing from God 
and also receive forgiveness from God. Because isn't there another scripture that says something about if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive? Isn't that a Bible passage? Aren't you Bible folks? Yeah, yeah. Right? I wonder what he means by that. I think it means you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. Yeah. I think it means what it says. But one way to think about it, oftentimes you're not able to receive forgiveness from God. Not that he's like this. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> nope. He's not like that. It's you harboring bitterness in your heart where you genuinely do not want to repent for something you've done wrong. So you're not going to get forgiveness for it. Listen up. What does the fox say? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so. Did that for my kids. Son, calm down. You guys. Hmm. Man. I, I understand uh, what, what bitterness does. Because unforgiveness turns into bitterness. I tell the kids in jail, I said, how many of you hate to be lied to? Hate it. How many of you hate to be played? They're like, you know, you're right, man. I let them stew that for a second. I said, how many of you have ever lied before? Yeah, you're right. You... They all raise their hand. I say, isn't it crazy what we hate done to us? Typically, we're going to do to somebody else, especially in the area of lying. They're like, oh. I said, that's why it's important that we forgive so we can be forgiven. Do you all see the connection about unrepentance? Where we got some harbor in us, and that part of our heart is hard. It doesn't allow God's Spirit to come in and give us that. All right. Because, I mean, if you think about it, those how many of you claim to be born again followers of Jesus Christ where you feel like you've had an encounter with him and had your sins forgiven and he really saved you? Raise your hand. Anybody here? Okay, that's a lot of y'all. I mean, there's actually enough of y'all right there to change this whole town. Do y'all know that? I mean, if you're thinking about if God's spirit really is in all of you, that the same power that raised him from the dead dwells in you, man, whoo! Y'all could affect such change in this community. Starting in your own family. Starting in your homes. Dads. Starting in your homes. Dads. Starting in your homes. I tell them boys, how many of you hate that your dad ran out on you? Mm. I say, how many of you got kids? Mm. I said, come on. We gotta stop the cycle. The power of God is able to do that. Power of God. I remember when I when I married, and then we found out we were going to have a baby. <laughs> or laying on my bed, going, "I don't know how to be a dad. I don't know how to be a dad. I'm going to ruin this kid. I'm going to ruin him." And I never forget. God just said, "Just listen to me. I'll show you." Oh, yeah, that's good. I still about ruined him, but you know. I listen to him half the time. Forgiveness is a decision that I make to obey God and to walk in his ways. And, and, and you guys, that's the question I pose to you right now. If you can look in the mirror and you know that God has saved you. God has forgiven you for your sins. For what you've done wrong. For your sin that put him on the cross. And hey, there's varying sins, I guarantee you. Some of you could be a fornicating, adulterer, murderer, crazy, rah! all the way down to cutting mattress tags off of mattresses. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't care. Born to be one. But if you can look at yourself and know you've been forgiven, and you look at that person that comes to your mind, and you go, oh. And I know that feeling. Hey, I ain't talking now until you. I'm talking with y'all. Do you understand? 
Just like if we were in my living room, this is how I'd be talking with y'all. I understand that feeling. That feeling that turns into pain. Because when you think about that person, all you want to do is get revenge. Lord, use me as an instrument. Mm. Lord, let me go Old Testament on that person. Come on. Come on. Because I know the devil whispers to us, oh, justice is not going to be served. And you know the reality is, y'all, on this earth, justice isn't always served. And you've got to be okay with that. You've got to trust the Lord because guess what? There's a day of reckoning for every person. Every person. I remember my daughter, she, you know, anyway, I'll just tell you, someone was mean to her. <laughs> and I was like, mm. I said, do you want daddy to go talk to this fella? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I went and found him. He didn't know me. <laughs> but I walked up to him. A group of people said, hey, your name is? He said, yeah. I said, I got a message from God for you. <laughs> That's just what I said. Because I was kind of shaky. He, he was stunned. I was like, I'm going to say it real slow because I know your heartbeat is pounding right now and things starting to echo because your adrenaline is turning on. This crazy old man is looking at you. I said, here's a message. No evil deed ever goes unpunished. Don't you forget it. And I felt the tempering of the Holy Spirit say, finish. I was like, oh, it's so good right now to leave him right there. I said, your only chance is the cross of Jesus Christ. And then I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you got an evangelist mad at you for messing with his daughter. But we can trust that God Almighty has everything under control. And that he'll deliver us from evil, but he'll take care of evil. It doesn't have to be our responsibility unless he tells us to engage and do the deal. And maybe he will. I've got a very dear friend who last year was at his house uh he's a he's got a strong military background and uh we watched my film together and we we're watching in his house he has a house up in the mountains that you couldn't find gps i mean gps starts to get scared i mean it's just out in the middle of nowhere and we watched the film and he just starts crying and he i was like man he's really boohooing i was like man you all right he said, well, I never told nobody this, Victor, but I'm going to tell you about my childhood. And he told me how horrible his childhood was. Put in foster care, one after another, after another, after another. Abuse and all that. And he said, I got the place where his, his heart was turning hard. But then he let God touch him. And he let God use that passion for justice. He hunts bad people. People that will kill innocent people. Children, women. And he says, uh, I want to give you something, Victor. I said, well, all right. He says, it's in my basement. I was like, that's weird. Uh, I'm, uh, basements are weird. And he went downstairs and he brought it up. And I'm sitting at the table, y'all. And he, he puts this big old piece of tile right on the table in front of me. He said, this is for you. And I looked at it. And we're friends, you know. So I was like. And I'm from the south, so I was like, buddy, it's a tile. It's an ugly piece of tile. <laughs> what? Thanks? I don't say. And he snickered. He said, yeah. And then he pulled out a picture and put it down next to it. It was him holding his, this tile in his gear. He said, I took this out of Osama bin Laden's headquarters after we bombed it in Afghanistan. And I went, that's my tile. I'm my towel, buddy. <laughs> I said, man, if the ministry gets low on funds, I can put this thing on eBay, can I? <laughs> and he said something like, man, you won't ever hear the drones hit your car or something. I don't know. <laughs> God Almighty will get justice and evil will pay the price. We can trust God. Osama thought he'd get away with it, right? And then even if nobody would have caught him, the moment his eyes shut for eternity, he would have been standing. And he would have to face judgment. You guys, forgiveness is a good thing. 
Forgiveness is not allowing someone else's actions or attitude to control or dictate my actions, attitudes. Forgiveness is an act of my will. If I don't make decision, I'll have to live with the crippling consequences of my unforgiveness. Forgiveness is getting my own heart right with God. And forgiveness is a lifelong lifestyle, not a one-act time or one-time act. Of, I'll tell you this. I've forgiven people, and when the name have been brought up or they come back, and they're in my I feel myself starting to get, ooh. And I go, wait a minute. I've forgiven that bonehead. And you know what it is? It's temptation from the enemy saying, oh, yeah. He remember, and I go, I forgave him. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. In the name of Jesus, I'm serious. Leave me alone. You're going to get your head whacked off, demon. <laughs> God will send a big warning angel to hack you. So don't fall for the temptation. Forgiveness is a miracle of God working in me. Forgiveness is godliness, and it belongs to the ethics of heaven. Forgiveness is to be granted whether or not there's repentance on the part of the one who has offended me. And lastly, forgiveness is a willingness to rebuild our relationship with the one who offended me. In most cases, but not all. You guys, as a kid, I was, you know, suffered pretty bad abuse at the hands of a stepfather. Not my biological, but my stepfather. And you know what? Later in life, and it was bad, as bad as it can be. It caused me to have 123 visits to a trauma specialist in nine months. I've been on Debaco, Debakin, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium. I've suffered dissociation on my mind, acute levels of PTSD because of that man. And you know, later in life as a Christian, I was traveling, speaking, and I went through the small town where I used to live, and the Lord said, go find him. It's the hardest thing I ever did. Because he had actually been to prison, escaped prison, fled the country. They never called him. He actually turned himself in. And then he had had open-heart surgery. He did his time, and he just got out. And I, I, man, I tracked him down and found him. And he was living in a little trailer on a river. I said, hey, uh, I remember I opened up. He was, he was nervous because it was me. I'm a full-grown man now, Marine, black belt. Crazy. <laughs> and I never forget, I think it's just thinking out of his evil instincts, he tried to intimidate me. Like, hey, man, I said, uh huh, uh uh. Oh, boy, then you're an old man right now. I'm in my prime. You kidding me? I can see your scar from that surgery. I'll open you up right now. <laughs> I shouldn't ought to share everything I. Think that was my inside voice coming out. Sorry about that. You know what? God gave me the grace. He said, He needs to see my love through you. Because everything He did to me would be proof that God loved Him if He could sense God's love through me. You know what? I was there at his deathbed when He was dying. And I started reading scripture to Him about the cross and how much Jesus Christ loved him. Hated his lifestyle, but loved him and wanted him to be forgiven of his sin, but he had to accept it. He had to repent, and then he could spend eternity in heaven. Because I told him, you're dying. You, I mean, you were right there. And he wouldn't do it. And I ended up going to the house, and I said, man, honey, are you going to go to hell? Because hell's a real place. That ain't make-believe, y'all. That's eternity apart from God of suffering and torment made for the angels that fell, the demons, and Satan. And I forget, I woke up about 4 a.m. in that morning before the last time I'd ever seen him, and God put it on my heart just to start praying for him. And I started praying for his salvation, and I started weeping. A supernatural act of God. No way I'm going to weep for a man who done evil like that to me and my family. I felt the heart of God, y'all. I felt the heart of God. It's overwhelming. Now I went in that next morning. He's in that bed and he had a new nurse. He said, hey nurse, this is my son. He said, I'm proud of him. He became a preacher man. 
And he said, he's been worried about my eternity. But he don't have to worry no more. He said, I made it right with God last night. The nurse actually backed up out of the room. It was a very holy moment. I thought, Lord, what do, you, what do I say? I don't even know what to say now. And he just said, tell him you love him. I said, Dad, I love you. For the first time in my life, he looked at me and he said, boy, I love you too. And I felt good, y'all. And then I knew I was done, so I grabbed the pillow. What kind of church is it? They laugh at that. What, what are you teaching these people here? That's wrong. Very funny. Very funny, but wrong. That's how I regulate my emotions. So I don't get up here and cry. I don't think it's... No. Wow. Because God gave me the grace to forgive him. He got free. And guess who else got free? Victor Marks. Because it don't matter if some people die, you can still be bound up because of unforgiveness. And some of you, for people who have died, you need to go home tonight and write a letter. Forgive them. Not justify what they did, but just say, I give them my right to hurt you back for hurting me. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. We'd love to stay connected with you and invite you to the conversation beyond this podcast. You can check out more of the work we're doing around the world at victormarks.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked in the show notes. Be sure to drop us a comment in the review section if today's show has impacted you in any way or if there's anything you'd like to hear more of. We're always encouraged to hear from you. Thanks for spending your time with us. Until next time.